Giles, Giles Brown. Brown. Let's talk. White supremacy. Gav, in white supremacy, Gavin Evans traces the historical roots of a white supremacy beginning in the 19th century with Charles Darwin taking us through the 20th century and what you might argue is a revival. I'm delighted to say that Gavin joins me live on the line now. Gavin, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Whereabouts are you this morning, by the way? I'm in North London. Super. Right. Uh, white supremacy. You've taken this back to uh, the historical uh, roots of this, because if you mention white supremacy to a lot of people, they will immediately think Ku Klux Klan, 1930s, the film Birth of a Nation, etc. So, but where do you start with, with, with your book? So I, I do, I start with Charles Darwin, which might surprise a lot of people because a lot of, m- most people and, and appropriately think of Darwin um, as not only a, a, a great scientist, but but also um, as a humanist, someone who was kind to people individually, who helped individual black people as well, um, and so on. But he had um, what today would be considered extraordinarily racist views, which got worse um, and more extreme um, in the late 19th century as race science started to kind of kick in in the public discourse. So, so he made a number of statements about um, black people being inferior intellectually to white people. And he also made um, a number of statements about um, that, that the stock of, of, of um, intelligent humanity needed to be improved. Um, so that's the basis of eugenics. And then his, his cousin, a guy called Dalton, um, uh, ran with that. A uh, Galton, I'm sorry, Galton. Um, ra- um, uh, he he ran with that, um, and he developed what what he called eugenics. Um, and um, about on the one hand, improving the stock of of humanity, um, and and he he felt that in, um, rich people were more intelligent than poor people, as well as white people were more intelligent than black people, um, and eliminating those who. He said we're genetically inferior, which included Africans, which included um, people who were mentally disabled, um, which included um, anyone who he thought was not intellectually up to scratch. So that that was the basis of eugenics, and and it's it's spread from then on. It's, it's interesting because you know we think of Darwin, we're thinking of the age of enlightenment and the great scientific developments that go with that, and. Can you argue then from a an expansionist imperialist uh, backdrop that that Darwin has in terms of you know people are exploring they're calling it the new world the dark continent the far east which of course we don't call those anymore um, and it seems that there is unbridled optimism but at the same time they need to justify why the British Empire or the French Empire or the German empires are if you like subjugating and subduing these other races yeah I think I think I think colonialism does have a lot to do with it I mean it's not a coincidence that it was in the era of the great colonial expansion in the second half of the 19th century that um, race, what, what became known as race science, I always think of it as scientific racism, but uh, or faux scientific racism really takes off. Um, and people like um, Darwin and Galton are part of it. I mean, there was resistance um, to it. There were people. It's not like there were no, there were no other ideas. Um, there were um, uh, people who were vehemently opposed. Uh, the, the person who also discovered um, natural selection, Alfred um, Russell Wallace, um, was vehemently opposed to both racism and to eugenics um, and was a feminist throughout his life. So, And, and there were others as well. Um, so it wasn't as if there were no other ideas around, but, but those were certainly the dominant ideas and they became even more dominant in the first half of the, um, of the 20th century, really until and, and until um, the Nazis were defeated. Because um, obviously, he, Darwin is, is, if you like, he's talking to the scientific community, he's talking to the, uh, the, the founders of empire, he's, he's preaching to the converted. And, and obviously, as I said before, there's an expansionist time with, with the empire. And so if you are 
a middle class civil servant, a British Army officer, in a posting in in Rhodesia, for example. Um, and, and by your accent, you come from that part of the, you know that that the, from Southern mm-hmm, Africa yeah. as well. You know, call me a detective, or whatever. Uh, but um, uh, then you 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 know people will think yes, absolutely. You know, Darwin is right because look, I'm living, breathing proof that we are we are superior to other races. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a lot to say to that because um, the if you are dominating another. A um, lot of people, if you're ordering them about, um, if they having to kowtow to you, um, if you if you are using violence against them as as was part of the colonial pro- project, um, and if that that colonialism was was part of that colonialism, certainly in in, in Britain's West Indies um, territories, w- was was in, um, uh, implicated with slavery, um, then your attitudes to those you dominate, those you enslave. Are not likely to be to con- uh, that that they are your equals. Um, that would be an uncomfortable thing for anybody to 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 hold uh, uh, an uncomfortable idea. So yes, co- I mean the colonial experience reinforced um, and deepened that 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 um, that racism in, um, throughout the uh, British and French and. American society, and also, of course, is that there's that 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 natural Christian thing in in the order of things. You are we are in a a pre a predisposed order, you know, some to, some to lead, some to follow, etc. And so, therefore, we are you know you are spreading the the word of uh, of God, and therefore these people are in fear. They are, so they they don't you know they're they're seen as as quote unquote savages, basically. Mm, there, there was that. I mean, the, uh, Christianity also um, often was preceded. Um, colonialism was preceded by by missionaries. So, and and the idea that that you subjugate a people so that you can bring them um, to Christ, that kind of thing. I mean, there was also um, uh, within the the South African colonial experiment the, I, the Calvinist idea that that the descendants of Ham, um, Ham was one of the sons of Noah who saw his father naked, and that was a really bad thing. So he was his um, sons and or forevermore were cursed, and and there was a view in the Dutch Reformed Church that the, those were the black people, um, and that view also existed in in bits and pieces of of American um, slave society as well. So far, so bad. Let's let's move on to sort of the, the, if we, if we can to the the twenties and uh, uh, you know the the twentieth century. We have the war to end all wars. Of course, we have various nations from quote unquote empire coming back to fight in Europe. Indians. Uh, we there are several, and obviously from South Africa and from all around. You know the the empire. But we have this after the empire. We have this you know, the Huxley and Brave New World. You know, this is going to be a, again. Science is making huge steps. Eugenics is obviously sounding very, very, um, very, very appealing because uh, the science science thinks it has a a cure for everything, and this is the way um, this is the way that the world is supposed to be. Yes, and and part of eugenics was this idea that that everything was genetically related. Um, I mean, uh, Galton didn't know about genes um, and rejected um, genetics. Um, in the early 20th century, but but um, nevertheless, the the people who ran with eugenics were people who sort of thought like like Mendel's pea experiments that just one version of a of a gene could make all the difference. Um, now we now know no no better. Um, we now know that that doesn't exist. But that was the view behind um, eugenics, so that that if you could improve the stock by eliminating those who had bad genes. So that was seen as a scientific idea. Um, and um, the, it, particularly in the United States, um, and then the, 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 the eugenics of the United States spread to Nazi Germany, and there was a close link between them um, that, that has its residues today. So, I mean, if you say United States, everybody's immediately thinking Deep South, Alabama, Georgia, yeah, many, you know, the Ku Klux Klan, you know, the uh, the Jim the uh, the Jim Crow laws, etc., and and that has always seemed to me as as a, as a layman as as obviously intrinsically wrong, uh, but sort of wired into the to their DNA by by an, an educated population. Obviously, it's different in 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 New York and it's different in in, in California or whatever. So so where do where do who are the scientists for uh, for eugenics that that take this over or that cross uh, goes across the Atlantic to to Europe then? 
Well, okay, so the, 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 the scientists, or if you can call them that, um, were mainly in the north. I mean, they almost entirely in the north, actually. And they were, they were IQ theorists. Now, the whole idea of IQ started in, um, in, in France and the, the person who discovered or, or, or invented it said, look, it doesn't measure intelligence. It just measures certain kinds of abilities and, and not intelligent. But once it went to America, people thought it, it measured innate intelligence, which, which I think we, um, is simply wrong. Um, and, um, of course, when you test groups, um, uh, you find that they diff- have different exposure to things like abstract, abstract logic, which is what IQ measures. So you had different groups who measured different average IQs. Um, I mean, surprisingly, you might find um, uh, um, Ashkenazi Jewish people in that time tested below average on IQs, um, and they, the immigration decisions made on the were made on the basis of that. It's one of the reasons why fewer Jews were allowed in and many Jews were refused entry when they wanted to escape um, Nazi Germany in the 1930s. So the, that kind of idea, the, the, um, and then there were close contacts between some of the key people involved in implementing eugenics in the United States, and they, they forcibly sterilized about 70,000 people. Um, the, and, and that spread to Nazi Germany. So there were close links between some of the key thinkers in America um, and Nazi Germany, and 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 those actually survived during the war as well. Um, so um, America was very um, um, uh, Nazi Germany was very impressed with with what the Americans were doing um, with eugenics. So it was a it was a direct influence, not an indirect one. Yeah, but the th- I mean, if if you know your if you if you know your European history, there is an inbuilt. Uh, anti-Semitism in, in European history, all through European history. Mm. And so they all they go to do is, is literally just light the blue touch paper and retire on that with, with, with that one because there's an inbuilt racism or there's an, in, an inbuilt racism with that saying, well, you know, we are Christians, we are Christian Europe, therefore the Jews are quote unquote the other. But also mm. in Germany or in fascist states, but particularly in Germany in the, in the, in the 30s, science is the way forward because fascism and obviously Nazism is, is, is fascism on steroids and taken to the most extreme, but scientists are rock stars. Everybody thinks the future is science, be it streamlining, be it aviation, be it, you know, as, as rockets will start to be developed, etc. during the war. So this is, this is seen as, as forward thinking. And of course, when you have such a twisted mentality as Nazism, they are, they are going to, to take that to the extremes. And then there are further experiments that, that, that carried out, which go way beyond which is, which is even way beyond the pale i think i'll draw a line on that one yes so um i I mean i think you're quite right there there was a view that what they were doing was about i mean it was it was it was called racial hygiene um and it had a scientific gloss to it and um they believed that what they were doing was um was scientific and um that in the spirit of science you had to do things that were hard um, and it really, I mean, you go, it, it, um, you go back to the early 19th century and you see it starting in, in Germany, um, uh, in a concerted way with what happened, um, in Namibia, where the, the, the kind of, um, the first genocide of the 20th century happened, um, in, in Namibia. Um, and, um, the populations of, of two of the African, um, uh, tribes was, were, were almost wiped out as a result of, of, um, what the Germans did there. And there were experiments on, on, on prisoners, often without anesthetic and so on, by the, the, um, people who later became officials in the 30 years later, um, in the Nazis. So there, there was this line of, of, of faux science. That um, became um, dominant um, by the time the Nazis came to power. So it was they were ready. Eugenics um, in in Germany had already taken root in a deep way when the Nazis came to power. So it wasn't as if they invented it; they just applied it. Um, to an extraordinary degree. And not only that, but they applied it at the same time, but their legislation was also 
reworked so that you have the race laws coming in so that certain hmm. certain certain groups of uh, uh, certain races are discriminated against uh you're thinking i'm uh, thinking of for example the the mixed race children uh that were being hmm. born in the in in our uh, you know in that t- period of time because of because of colonial french soldiers who were in that area in the 20s and they were you know they were having relations with with european women and therefore there were mixed race babies being born and they had some and very they were forcibly uh, sterilized yeah yeah exactly exactly so, um, we know, obviously, if you've got anything of history, how, how the Second World War comes, the Nazis are wiped off, mainly off the face of the earth, obviously, some of them go to various places. And, and that would seem, you would think, to be the end of, of, of eugenics and white supremacy. But, you know, we have seen... We have seen in various places that continue. I mean, as I said before, you you're, you were an anti-apartheid uh, activist, of course, so you know only mm. too well what was happening in, in, in South Africa during the, the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, and 80s. And, and obviously we've seen uh, uh, interesting political ramifications within the past 15 to 20 years. Yeah, in the past two or three years as well. Yeah, um, the yeah, but, but I mean, I, just just a little bit of of, of background there. Um, um, for about fifteen twenty years, um, eugenics kept its head very low. Um, although the forcible sterilizations carried on in in Sweden, in um, Denmark, and in the United States, the last um, forcible sterilization in the United States um, took place. Um, in Portland, Oregon, in 1980. So, but what was the reason? What was the reason behind those forcible sterilizations, though, in Denmark they, and they, Sweden? Because I have you know, because that a lot of people they, would be raising an eyebrow on that one. They, they were they were considered to be subpar intellectually. Um, so right. people with what, what we would call now learning difficulties. Sure. Yeah. So so that there was that, um, but um, and but. Sort of bubbling away because th- th- what happened after the war was people thought, okay, it's not genes, it's all society. Whereas we, we now sort of think of, uh, that it's, that a lot of behavior has some genetic component to it, but, but, um, society has a huge, um, influence. But, um, w- what happened in, in the 19, in the late 1960s was that there was a, there was a group of mainly evolutionary psychologists, um, um, who, um, and educational psychologists who were, um, kind of bubbling away on the race science thing. And they were funded by something called the Pioneer Fund. Now, the Pioneer Fund was set up by an American in 1937 who was in deep collaboration with the Nazis, um, and believed that, um, black people, um, should be segregated, who believed that, um, eugenics was a great thing, um, and um, that's continued. So that's what the Pioneer Fund is all about. And they were funded by by the the, the Pioneer Fund. Um, and they had their kind of house journals and they were pumping out kind of race science, but no one was noticing them. Um, and then one of their number um, published a paper which got um, found its way into the Harvard Review and then was withdrawn later. But but um, suddenly it, it takes off and it goes... It, they, they become much more active, much more vocal, um, until you get in, in the early 1980s, 80, um, uh, um, um, they, they start, um, putting out more material and until we get to a book, um, called The Bell Curve. Now, The Bell Curve, um, was a book which, um, claims that the reason that, um, uh, that, that the poor people are innately less intelligent than, than, than those who um, are, are richer, and that the reason they're more poor people, poor black people in America, is because they're innately less intelligent. So it's a deeply racist book. Its premises, its conclusions, and its methods have been absolutely excoriated by experts in each of the areas that it um, that it looks at. But it became a bestseller, um, and and kind of race science starts to take off um, after that in the 1990s, um, and it becomes more mainstream. Could you argue that the the that the the ground is more fertile for that for that those sort of outlandish ideas to to take root then because of the political situation because of a world economic crisis because of because of conspiracy theories um, and and the rise of populism? Yeah, I think I think that's a very important part of it. I mean, um, you're getting um, on the one hand people feeling left behind, mainly. Um, 
young white men. So the, the gap um, in support for Kamala Harris and, and Trump among young white men and young white women is huge. Um, so they, they're feeling left behind and they find their way to these message board sites, um, where, which has its own kind of culture, um, of what they called kek, which is fun at other people's expense. Um, and they feel like they've been red pilled, um, into these ideas of race science. And, and you find them on, on places like 4chan. Um, which is a message board site and eight kun, which is another message board site and gab, which is another message board site. And they, the ideas kind of, um, are, are fertilized there. And, and it's in those channels, those, um, message board sites where all of the, the, the alt-right killers, the, the people who use AK 47s to go and gun down black people or Jewish people or Asian people or Mexican people, um, they've all, the ideas all come from there and they pure race science. It goes all the way back to eugenics. The, the kinds of things that Galton was saying 150 years earlier, almost word for word being repeated there. So that's the one side of it. But there are other more mainstream people who are pushing it. Um, I mean, one of them, um, and, and this might surprise people is, is, is the, the psychologist Steven Pinker. Now, Steven Pinker has advanced the idea that Ashkenazi Jewish people, of which she's one, is, um, are, are innately more intelligent than anybody else. Now you might think, well, everybody knows that, that, that Jewish people are smart. Um, and, you know, my father, just let me just say my father was Jewish, but, but it's a bad, it's a, it's a bad idea, not only because there's no evidence for that at all. And, 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 and the paper that he based it on, um, has been absolutely demolished. Um, but that, um, if you're going to say some one group's more innately more intelligent than another, then you're implicitly saying that other groups are innately less intelligent. So it's the kind of cat's paw mm. for scientific racism. And Pinker has been a big promoter of that. Um, so, um, I mean, there have been others, um, who, um, the journalist Andrew Sullivan has, has promoted the bell curve and Jordan Peterson has also promoted the same idea. So people who've got mainstream reach. Um, uh, are, 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 are kind of helping to legitimize these ideas. And then on the other hand, there's this bubbling sub subculture on places like 4chan. It's an interesting, it's an interesting situation, situation, isn't it? Because there are, there are disaffected youths everywhere on the internet. And, and yeah. as I say this quite a lot on my shows when I do the, my phone in shows is the fact that if you can't, if you are, if you are in a majority, majority group, if you're a white male and you can't understand and you're a, a white poor male or a white poor couple and you can't understand why you're not getting what you know, you're not getting what the Kardashians are getting or something like that and seeing on social media because you're being bombarded, bombarded by, by images, you will think that, you know, the, the reason is because, you know, the, the, you, sh you should be entitled to because you, you are inherently more, more intelligent or more privileged than that. And that's why, you know, people like this have social media followings or uh, will take out in the most horrendous ways their vengeance. Yep. And, and, and it's not, I mean, it's both on race, but it, it's invariably also, um, relates to women, um, and yeah. gay people as well, but, but most particularly women. I mean, this, the, when I, when I was researching the book and I went into 4chan, um, and, you know, and I would look at it every day for a week and then I'd have to give myself a long rest. Well, this is the incel, this is the incel thing, isn't it? This is the young white it, males. Yeah. They're just, it's, it's not only incel, it's the sort of Andrew Tates and people like that. So it's both the incels who are often very racist and, and the kind of extreme misogynists who think that rape is a right and that kind of thing. I mean, you, you really are getting that kind of thing. And at the same time, they're talking in the same terms about black people. Um, so, so the racism and the, um, misogyny go together. Um, I'm going to, unfortunately, as you can tell, we could probably talk about this for another for, for three or four hours, but I'm going to run out of time. If people want to find you online, uh, where is the place, best place to go, Gavin? So on Twitter, I'm at GMR Evans. Um, so that's, that's probably a good one to, 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 um, uh, to, to find me. And you, were, you can order the book via our own virtual bookstore as well. The book is called White Supremacy. Gavin Evans, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks very much, Giles.